Well, let's uh, take this conversation on markets forward. Varun Goyal of uh, Nippon India AIF is joining us to help us do that. Varun, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much, Prashantia. Your thoughts, uh, Varun, on uh, you know the strength that we are seeing. Uh, it's basically large amounts of chunky foreign money coming back day on day. Uh, what's your uh, best sense in terms of what's uh, leading uh, leading to this? Uh, any dominant drivers uh, as reasons behind this? And your assessment of how corporates are doing? I'm sure your and your team uh, has been meeting companies across the board, uh, portfolio companies and otherwise. What's the overall sense? What we hear is a fair bit of optimism about earnings growth and demand recovery. Your thoughts? Yeah, good morning, Prashant. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, so there is no doubt that uh, we are on a cyclical uptick as far as the economic growth is concerned. I think after several years, we are seeing robust demand coming back. I think the biggest indicator of that is coming up. If you see in the credit growth numbers, I think if for the first time since 2015, uh, and if you leave the small period in 2019, uh, credit growth seems to be running at 15% with even the uh, corporate sector uh, uh, credit growth coming back. So if that sustains it, believe you know, it means that people are buying more cars, people are buying more houses. Uh, there is some incremental capex activity which is happening in the economy. Of course, one needs to keep an eye out on what's happening in the global economy, how the U.S. interest rates play out, and more importantly, I think the most important factor for India is what happens to crude. If the crude can sustain below ninety dollars a barrel, I think that will be a good news. So I think globally there are risk factors which are emerging, but domestically India continues to have strong economic growth, uh, which is probably get reflected in a buoyant uh, equity markets at this point in time. All right. Hi, Varun. Good morning and thanks for joining us. So, um, I mean, you've taken us through your call on the market, but let's talk about some of these individual sectors. I see you have, you like some of the financials, you like the auto space. Uh, these are some stocks which have already moved up, moved up quite a bit, right? Do you think there's significant upside left here? Yeah, good morning, Pavitra. So I think uh, you know, uh, financials, both large and mid-cap, uh, is something that uh, we find really interesting. Uh, as I was mentioning, that the credit growth seems to be coming back and seems to be sustaining. Uh, our sense is the mid-cap financials, which were really beaten down since the ILFS crisis in 2018-19, uh, we are seeing them getting re-rated. I think there is a long way to go. Uh, there is a whole bunch of PSU uh, you know, banks which have underperformed for more than 10, 12 years. That's where, again, you know, we see a lot of banks getting derated from less than book value. You know, if they go even to the book value, there is a lot of money to be made. Uh, so that's one space which clearly stands out. Second, I think select names on the auto and the capital good side, uh, we remain quite positive. There is definitely uh, you know, growth there. Uh, I think uh, also the real estate sector continues to show a lot of strength. Uh, we are continuing to see price hikes and we believe this should sustain considering the fact that uh, residential real estate prices have not really gone anywhere for the last eight, nine years. So the cyclical part of the economy clearly seems to be doing well. And uh, you know, if you add some mid-cap IT and chemical stocks, there again, we believe uh, growth would be much better than what is being anticipated at this time, uh, this point of time. So there's a lot of avenues for bottom-up stock picking, uh, and, and that's what we would like to do. Okay. Hi, Varun. Morning. Uh, so, you know, would you be using this opportunity to be fully invested uh, in equities right now, since you're saying that there are, you know, so many opportunities? Because, uh, you know, there are some alternatives to equity investing also. For example, a lot of these corporate bonds are offering very good yields. Uh, so, would you be 100% in equities or, you know, is that an area you would look to explore also? Uh, so, good morning, Samara. So, I uh, look after only equity uh, part of the business, so I can comment only on equity. Uh, so, I think uh, as far as equity markets are concerned, uh, we are looking at 10 to 15% earnings growth for FY23. Uh, uh, so, we are looking at, let's say, a 730 rupees Nifty EPS, somewhere between 800 to 850 for this year. And I think come Diwali, markets will start discounting FY24 earnings. So we're looking at somewhere between 900 to 950 rupees earnings for FY24. So overall, I think 10 to 15 percent earnings growth on the broader markets looks quite healthy, and that's the kind of you know compounding that Nifty has seen for the last 20, 25 years, and we see no reason why that should change uh, going forward. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so ma the at 900 rupees uh, for FY24, the market is, would be at about uh, 20 times, right? Uh, this is 24 earnings, not 23. Uh, and and yeah. this, uh, some of these names that you're talking about where 15, 20% earnings growth, what are you willing to pay for these? Do you think, I mean, there is enough uh, comfort valuation-wise? 
So definitely, you know, if you look at the last 10 year average market fee, we are traded at 17, 18 times. We are clearly above the 10 year average. So one needs to be cautious, you know, from that point of view. That is why we believe one needs to be more selective in terms of, you know, uh, stock pickings. Also, you know, the global outlook seems to be getting more cloudy. I think the 15th October, uh, what happens in China, whether they continue with the COVID suppression policy, uh, because that's going to have a big bearing on the crude oil price. If China continues with the COVID suppression policy, hopefully crude can stabilize below 90. Uh, but if they make it normal, you know, if the Chinese economy goes back to the growth path, we see crude going uh, above $100 a barrel. And that should be a difficult time for India. So these are clearly some of the risk factors that one needs to be really uh, watchful for. Selectively, uh, the spaces that I mentioned, we continue to be buyers. And uh, we believe it's a good time for bottom-up stock.